Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn Payments channel. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction about 3D Secure 2.0 protocol. In this video, we'll first look at a brief overview about the 3DS 1.0 protocol, how a typical e-commerce transaction would work, and we'll understand what is 3DS 2.0. And finally, we'll also understand what are the advantages of 3DS 2.0 over 1.0. Now let's look at a typical e-commerce transaction flow. I have covered this completely in a different video, the link to which will appear as I speak, but let's look at it in brief. In a normal e-commerce transaction flow, we have a merchant website, which also has a form where we can enter the payment card credentials. So we have a merchant website and in that there is a plugin provided by the payment gateway where the merchant can capture the payment card credentials. So once we check out from the merchant website and then enter the payment card credentials, the merchant website will interact with the payment gateway component of it, where the card details are passed. The payment gateway then will check if the issuer or the card bin is registered as a part of the ACS for 3D Secure. So the PG works with the directory server and passes the card number and bin details etc. And the directory server will send back the registered ACS link back to the payment gateway. And the payment gateway will provide it back to the merchant website. And the merchant website now redirects the link to the ACS link. This message is called as a payer authentication. This is where we authenticate if the card holder is a legitimate card holder or not. So this is a very important aspect in 3DS 1.0. So where there is an authentication done to, to, to ensure that the card holder is legitimate. So once this card holder authentication is done, then we go for the authorization where the PG slash acquirer builds an authorization message and sends it to the schemes for authorization. So this first leg is where we authenticate and second leg is where we authorize the particular transaction. And in 3DS 1.0, the typical approaches were where we authenticate the card holder using a password or an OTP, which is typically taken care by the ACS. Now let us look at some facts about 3DS 1.0. 3DS 1.0 is a messaging protocol currently maintained by Visa. Some of the challenges about 3DS 1.0 are it is very tightly coupled uh, within a web interface for authentication. And the typical authentication factors are password and OTP. And there is a very limited data exchange between the merchant and the payment gateway, which flows to the directory server, etc. And due to the second factor being password or OTP and people forgetting their passwords or sometimes the OTP is not reaching. So there is a lot, there is a lot of bad checkout experiences and the checkouts being abandoned, which is a big loss for the merchants as well. So what is 3DS 2.0? 3DS 2.0 is an enhanced version of 3DS 1.0 designed and developed by EMV Co. So what are the enhancements? 3DS 2.0 puts mobile first. So Apart from the standard browser based authentication for the card holder, it also supports mobile payment application based authentication. It also brings the view of authenticating the card holder, not just for payment use cases, but for general identity checks as well. Apart from the standard 3DS 1.0 challenge flow, when I say challenge, challenge is nothing but an OTP or a password based authentication. So apart from the challenge flow for authenticating the card holder, 3DS 2.0 also talks about something called as a frictionless flow. So what is a frictionless flow? Where the issuer thinks that the card holder is actually transacting from a legitimate device or from a merchant that they know. So based on different factors and the data that is provided, the issuer says, I don't want to re-authenticate the card holder using a password or an OTP. So let the transaction complete. So this is called as a frictionless flow. So 3DS 2.0 talks about this frictionless flow, a challenge based flow, which is basically again challenging the card holder for some kind of an authentication. And it also provides 
information about merchant initiated transactions. So the transaction types in 3ds 2.0 are app based transaction that is mobile app based transactions and also browser based transactions and merchant initiated transactions. And the authentication flows it supports is the challenge based flow and the frictionless flow. Now let us look at how 3ds 2.0 views about the different entities involved or the different parties involved. The first party is nothing but a 3ds server. It is very analogous to the payment gateways, PSPs, acquirers who provide the payment gateway services or the merchant plugins to the merchants. So 3ds server works with the directory server for the authentication request and response. So whatever today we are calling about the PG component is analogous to the 3ds server. Next is the 3ds requester. So the 3ds requester is nothing but the merchant website or the merchant application. So the merchant application works with the 3ds server. So here again the 3ds requester has been classified into two types. First one is the app based and second one is the browser based. In case of an app based 3ds requester where the merchant has a mobile app, the merchant mobile app can have a component called as a 3ds SDK which is typically provided by the 3ds server. And this 3ds SDK is integrated onto the 3ds requester mobile application. Whereas a 3ds requester can also have a mobile based website like a browser based website and it works with the browser components. So the first part is the 3ds server which is the payment gateways, PSPs, etc. And the second component is the 3ds requester. The next important component is the 3ds client. So this is kind of a new component or an entity involved in this 3ds 2.0. So this component is responsible to perform the cardholder authentication and it also collects the data that is required as a part of the authentication request message. We will look into the flow in the subsequent slides but the key thing here is this 3ds client in case of a mobile app is a separate SDK that is integrated onto the requester app. So the requester app has to have this 3ds SDK embedded in it and it will collect all the data of that particular mobile device or of the card holder and pass it to the 3ds server via the requester app. And this SDK in case of a mobile app is also responsible to perform the card holder authentication bit. So this 3ds client could be an SDK in case of a mobile app whereas it also could be a standard browser based approach. The next two parties are also present at the 3ds 1.0 which is the directory server and the ACS. The directory server is responsible to route the messages between the ACS and the 3ds server. It also is responsible to validate the 3ds server, the requester etc. The ACS we all know is responsible to authenticate the card holder and it also could take into consideration a lot of other information that is passed as a part of the authentication request and determine if the challenge has to be performed or not. So there are some additional responsibilities for an ACS as a part of this 3ds 2.0. I mentioned that 3ds 2.0 supports a different transactions like app based, browser based, frictionless and with challenge etc. I'm going to take an example of an app based with a challenge flow to explain how a 3ds 2.0 transaction works. So here we have a mobile app which is a 3ds application, a 3ds 2.0 application where we have a 3ds request app, a merchant app which has a 3ds SDK embedded in it. So this yellow box is nothing but an app which, which is a 3ds request app with an SDK. So customer performs a transaction on this 3ds request app and enters the payment credentials and the requester works with the SDK to gather the 3ds information. It could be information on the device or on the application etc. And with the information gathered the 3ds request app builds an authentication request and then sends it to the 3ds server. The 3ds server sends the authentication request to the directory server which in turn works with the ACS and then gets the response 
of that particular authentication request and the response is forwarded to the 3ds requester so here in case if there is a challenge that has been put forth where the acs says i want to go with a challenge i want to authenticate the card holder using some kind of a mechanism it could be a otp it could be a password or it could be a biometric as well so here the key thing here is apart from the standard approaches of a password and an otp the 3ds 2.0 also allows for other authentication method methods like biometrics so here the response is to send a challenge flow so in this case the 3ds requester app requests for a challenge to the sdk and it sends a challenge request and the 3ds sdk works with the acs to set up the challenge and perform the authentication so here in this case the sdk works with the acs to say okay what is the authentication mechanism okay if it is otp send me an otp i'll gather the otp and then verify and once the challenge is completed the acs also sends a response that is the results of the challenge to the directory server to the 3ds server and it also informs about the challenge completion to the 3ds sdk so once the challenge is complete once we verify if the card holder is legit then the response is received by the 3ds requester and the 3ds requester then works with the 3ds server which in turn will do the authorization like aspect of it so the key thing here is apart from the standard authentication request that we see in 3ds 1.0 the change here is there is a lot of other data that is also sent as a part of this authentication request thanks to the 3ds sdk and then we have the challenge being established between the 3ds sdk and the acs so here if it is a frictionless flow this entire leg of challenge would not be there the issuer would say hey the app seems to be legitimate the sdk seems to be legitimate so and the value of the transaction is let's say it is less than say five dollars so let me go and approve that particular transaction let me bite the risk so in this case the issuer has more power to determine if there's a challenge to be established or it could be a frictionless flow so in case of a frictionless flow there would be no challenge and the other thing is there's a new message called as results request and response which is sent back to the 3ds server to know the results of the challenge so this is how a 3ds 2.0 transaction flow looks like so what is the main difference between 3ds 1.0 and 2.0 first things first is the frictionless flow where the issuer is able to determine if a challenge is required or not and the second one is more authentication methods as i said apart from standard otp or static passwords thanks to the sdk there could be other authentication methods that also be used the last and the most important one how is the issuer able to support the frictionless transactions is purely because the amount of data that is passed on between the 3ds request wrap and the issuer which enables the issuer to take this decision so there is more than about 150 data elements something around that is what get exchanged between the merchant to the issuer and there are a lot of optional and conditional data elements in this so which gets exchanged for the issuer to take the decision so these are the differences between 1.0 and 2.0 the 3ds 2.0 specifications are available in this url i'd urge you to go through these documents it is very clearly documented the flows are very clearly documented in this particular url thanks for watching the video hope you learned something new from it do like and subscribe thanks again